Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 3 with another exhibition match. This time, Hokomogo vs. Exploit on one of the brightest maps in the game, Pla Battle for Planet 17. No, seriously, this is really bright. I've actually reduced... I've reduced the brightness in order to avoid it being way too bright without Fog of War on. This is... yeah. This is bright. Anyway. This is a map which is asymmetric. Yeah, this is a bit unusual, but it... It is there. It seems to work pretty well, actually, despite the asymmetry. Everything, though, is plus 2.04, so basically plus 2. Both players start out with the standard 3 mech spot here. This is pretty much the start. The start box is basically here and here. That's basically it. And other than that, this area is typically where the north player will expand to first and then try to expand forward towards the center. South player will typically try to crawl along here and along the south side and along the east side. It's not unusual for the south player to try to go along the north edge once they get up here, at least with a few raiding forces, so the north player has to be a bit careful about that. But I don't often see north side players go for these metal extractors, at least not at first. They typically try to go for the center and take the hill, and then from this hill they go and try to take the rest of these expansions. The asymmetry does naturally lead to some odd results, though the fact that there's a hill there does typically mean the north side has an easier time getting the expansions up here and the south side the ones further down. Anyway, on to the game itself. And we have both players going for Cloaky Butt Factory. Exploit starting out with a couple glaives to a conjurer, while Hokomoko being much more aggressive, five glaives to a conjurer, though Exploit actually starting out with the conjurer. Expecting to have to worry about building up quickly, I suppose. A little bit surprising given the size of the map and the fact that there is not any reclaim. No reclaim whatsoever. It would be flashing in blue. It does not exist on this map. So there's really no reason to have an early, or at least that early of a conjurer. It's a very risky strategy. Exploits can be relying a lot on their early glaive micro to be able to actually get through Hokomoko's forces. Although I should point out though that despite their LO value, Exploit's actually been improving a lot recently. Like, Exploit used to be always hovering around 1300 or so, and they just, like, a month ago got good. And their LO has been, they, it has been steadily rising, so it might say 1476, but they're probably better than that. Like, they just, the game just clicked for them, and they got good. So yeah, despite the numbers, exploit is not to be underestimated. This is not necessarily a free win for Hokomoko, just to point that out. Anyway, Exploit is coming along this, sorry, Hokomoko is coming along the sides, both sides. Exploit has no defense to set up yet. Right after I say this may not be a free win, Hokomoko is in a really good position. They're in a really good spot to start harassing quickly. The early conjurer, like I said, was a risky strategy which did not pay off, and Exploit, able to get rid of one of Hokomoko's glaives without losing one of their own. They have to be careful, they are going to lose one of their own glaives if they're not, if they're moving forward, it is auto-repairing, but that auto-repair stopped, that glaive needs to move back. And of course, Glaive over to the northeast as well. Attacking when Exploit's forces were out of position. And does go down, but not before taking out a few of the, the wind generators and one of the metal extractors. So Hokomoko's economy, very safe. Exploit's starting to harass it as well, but not losing anything. Loses a tiny amount of energy time. That's about it. Compared to Exploit losing about like, plus four in energy and plus four in metal, I'd say that Echo Hokomoko got ahead. So, Hokomoko is currently ahead in this game. Exploit right now only has... Do they only have the one glaive? No, they have... They have two glaives. Two over here, and one of them just died in the center of the map. So, Exploit kind of falling behind a bit. That early Conjurer is going to be a bit of a... It's going to be a costly mistake for the first little while. If they started out with a defensive turret, like Lotus or Defender, that probably would have been a slightly healthier strategy given the size of the map. I think it's 10 by 10. It's... Not the smallest map, but it is definitely small. And more... Oh, bad call there. Warrior ends up hitting a bunch of glaives unaware. I mean, at this point, Exploit actually had no way of knowing that was there. They don't have any radar right now. They just have... They just have... That uh, line of sight. That's it. Didn't know the warrior was there. Just attacked. Pokemoko continuing to build up, building up their... Yeah, building up more warriors. Exploit, however, switched over to Zeus, which is a rather surprising strategy. I can kind of see the idea, but the thing is... 
I would kind of go for Rockwoods personally. I mean, it, they will work decently well against Warriors, but it's just... Rockwoods a bit more of a direct counter. At the same time, Hokomoko could more easily go for Glaives, but... Still, I... Zeus is going to be risky. It might work. It's not necessarily wrong, but it is a little bit risky. Like, Zeus Glaive, well microed, should be able to handle this. Warrior, whoever coming in here, which... Going to be able to get rid of this... No, actually, it won't. Thanks to the hill, the Lotus does not die. Metal Extractor does not die, actually. Just barely gets... Barely gets saved. 10 health left. Does not die. And Warrior becomes some metal food for exploit. Same time, Glaive coming in to get rid of the Rocco. Glaives do counter Roccos, so no surprises there. And down that Rocco goes. I think... Am I wondering, is exploit paying attention to this, or is this... No, they apparently are paying attention. That is auto micro. Sorry, that isn't auto micro. I don't think, anyway. And exploit has now been going for defender nest. They are going for what they should have been doing in the first place. Building up defense turrets, building up that into the metal extractor. And then from there, building into a... Built into... Sorry, I'm getting distracted a bit. Building the Fender Nest, that's good. Keeps that area a bit more safe. Still, Hokomoko actually getting har harassed pretty well. Exploit coming in, cutting in areas that are not well defended. I mean, Hokomoko has been expanding nakedly most of this game, so it's not hard to say how it's gonna go. I mean, Exploit's gonna be able to just run through, kill stuff. Kill this Rocco for one thing. Like, Rocco's are pretty much directly countered by Glaze, so that's... That is going to work very well. However, the defenders are going to be able to get rid of the Glaive pretty well. It, oof. Yeah, that Rock, whoever had... It had the advantage of position. Managed to win that way, and still, Exploit does have... I don't think... They do have an even economy. Pokemoko and Exploit right now are exactly even. And from there, it looks like Hokomoko will be... What will they be doing? Looks like they're trying to harass, but Exploit is starting to spot them. Exploit does have some radar around their base. Hokomoko, on the other hand, they also have radar. Quite a bit more radar, though. It's the one advantage of being in the north is because this area is low, or an advantage, safe radar can be had in your main base, or near your main base, that allows you to see the entire valley. Whereas, on the south side, there's this giant hill in the way. So if you put radar anywhere, especially on the low ground, which Exploit hasn't, but it's difficult to put it in a safe spot and have it be forward. Actually, Exploit has put one radar in the valley, which means they can't see past that ridge. So they're seeing less than half of the map with two radar towers. On the other hand, Exploit... Sorry, Okamoko, They have their radar tower and... Right here. And they can see quite a lot. And it's just that one radar tower, too. They can see most of the north side of the map. That being said, Exploit still has their glaives dealing damage, but they are gonna... Well, one of them's gonna suicide, the other two do get away. Exploit does them get them away in time. And now able to get a pretty decent army. The warrior, not in a good position compared to the, the Rocco. The Rocco needs to get out of there. Sorry, the warrior needs to get out of there. The Rocco's fine. And glaives coming along from the south will be able to get rid of the Rocco. This is coming down very much to micromanagement and unit type counters. And at this point, Hokomoko is actually not in the best position. Although, Exploit should probably not be building quite so many warriors. There's basically just a stream of Rockos coming out. Like, Hokomoko is going for Rocco with some Glaive, while Exploit's going for a mix of Rocco Glaive Warrior. Given that mix, I mean, Glaive alone would basically be the advantage at this point. They can keep their Glaives alive, that'll work out nicely. But the warriors aren't going to do much good. They just aren't. If Exploit goes for Massive Glaive at this point, they are going to take out, at least for now, they're going to be able to kill the Rockos. They will have to obviously keep in mind that Hokomoko might switch to Mass Warrior, but Hokomoko is going very much for Gla for Rocco. Exploit switching over to Glaive and Hammer, along with some Zeus, but Hammer, a bit surprising there. Not quite sure the motivation for the use of Hammer is. I can kind of, I think what Exploit's trying to do is just get around the range of the Rockos, even though the Glaives can typically dodge in and avoid being hit. But hitting Rockos with hammers is quite difficult to do. 
That and then maybe trying to just harass with the, the hammers. Typically, though, you'd use hammers for getting through defenses. Getting through Rocco's an option, but not really the one that hammers are typically used for. I'm curious to see how that will pan out. But at this point, bigger deal is that Exploit is losing a lot of glaives where they don't have to. Losing a lot of glaives to Warriors. It's coming down to positioning. Exploit still does not have radar coverage of that area. They have very little line of sight. And what line of sight they do have is with very weak units, the glaives. So it's difficult for them to get in and get some shots in and actually deal damage without losing stuff. Ugh, and Exploit just lost their commander over to the north as well. So Exploit, not in the best position, but they are ahead economically. They're just behind militarily, losing a lot of glaives while Hokomoko is keeping the Rockos alive. And they should be able to just march in at this point. I mean, they have... How many markers do they have? Yeah, Exploit has about three, so... Hokomoko has about 20 Rockos. And there aren't really that many glaives to deal with them. There are hammers, which are not doing too much, because Rockos can pretty easily dodge the projectiles. That's the thing. Rockos... Rockos move. Hammers... Hammers have a slow-moving shot. Rockos can move to avoid it. It's predictable. I think Auto Micro will avoid it, actually. So it's not like you have to worry too much about it. Which is why I was curious why hammers were used. It doesn't seem like the best of... It doesn't seem like the best idea. It's not really much of a counter. Hammers are going to counter statics. They're going to counter defenses. They're going to counter buildings directly. And they could be used for side raiding over the ridges if it weren't for the fact that the Rockers have pretty much cut off this ridge of the east. And the western ridge is... Well, it's pretty securely Hokomoko's. Or rather, the center ridge is securely Hokomoko's. And at this point, Hokomoko is going to go for a sweep down the southwest, go straight in. Basically, they're rushing in for the kill. This, I think, is going to end the game. I don't see Exploit getting out of this. The folks on Hammers... Curious. Evidently ill-advised. Focus on Glaives, like I said, that is where the focus should have lain. Th that's the best place to focus. Because Glaives counter Rockers, and there's so many Rockers at this point, there's a lot of commitment to them. And yeah, a switch to Warriors would be dangerous. But having... Like, Glaive Rocco yourself? Like, Heavy Glaive, Light on Rocco? That would deal with the Warrior Switch. As long as you mic them carefully and you are mindful of when the Warrior Switch happens. But otherwise, no, that would have been fine. At any rate, Exploit looks like they are not going to be able to do much damage. They are holding they are holding out the Rockos decently well, however. The Glaives they have focused on are doing a decent job. They have switched their priorities... Well, they've gotten quite a few Glaives on Alt build. And they do have 20 metal pushing into the factory, so they are getting glaze one every one every ten seconds or sorry, one every five seconds or so. But so they're getting about twelve glaives a minute. That's good. That's what they need. Now, is there gonna be a warrior switch? And the answer looks to be no. Hokomogo has not gone for that yet. They're continuing to focus heavily on Rockos, and these glaives should be able to counter it. Now, Hokomoko is ahead economically, but there's a lot there is a how much metal is there here? There's a lot of metal in Exploit's territory. Like a thousand metal that Exploit could get if they win this fight. Actually, more than that. Plus this. Yeah, there's like 1,500 metal. If they win this fight, if they push back Hokomoko, there's 1,500 at least metal on the line. They could be pulling in quite a lot. And they're already starting to reclaim. That's good. They're pulling back as well. That was, that was a really smart move there. Reclaiming as much as they can, getting out of the way before they lose their conjurer. All they need is a couple more conjurers to do that with. It's a bit of a shame they lost their commander. That, Especially in enemy territory. That... That is painful. Not that Okamoko has actually gone and reclaimed it. Their commander's right there, but they haven't gone and reclaimed it. However, they are ahead economically, so it's not the biggest deal. But Exploit is the one who needs it. Okamoko could use it, definitely. But Exploit absolutely needs it. And even then, even with all this, there are just too many Rockos. They are pushing in too hard, and this is going to be game. Very valiant effort. Dealt a lot of damage. Good that there was a focus on Glaives, ultimately. But even with that focus on Glaives... And despite the fact that there has been a corresponding focus on warriors from Hokomoko, the Rockos are being pushed back. It's just too many Rockos coming in too fast. Hokomoko has the economic advantage. They have three caretakers. They have the ability to push out as many Rockos as the exploit pushes out Glaives. And Rockos really do get up in numbers. Like, they actually they benefit from the Lanchester Square Law far more than Glaives do. Actually, one of the curious things about 0k is because of the way that unit ranges work, this Lanchester laws 
I don't really think the Lantern Square Law would work primarily for any ranged unit. Like, all units at range should operate based off the Square Law. However, in practice I found that any unit that has like, around Glaive range, which is like, well, where is it? Yeah, around 200 or so. Any unit with like 200 range or less, maybe 250 at most, they effectively operate like melee units. Partly because they can't shoot through each other, which is true of most units. Actually, with, that, with few exceptions, like rogues are an exception, and hammers obviously are an exception. Most artillery, really, but of non-artillery, rogues are a notable exception. However, when it comes to units that have larger range, like rockets at 450, or 455, with a range like that, which to visualize, that's the range, compared to glaive, which is this. Glaives, they have to really clump up if they want to push their power to a higher level, if they want to really square their power, as it were. But that's only over a very short area. So for the most part, they in practice work like melee units. They're effectively linear in scaling. Especially, like I said, they can't shoot through each other, so you end up ultimately with a line as the optimal point. And you can't... The thing with the square law is... It kind of works because of the fact that range units can sort of kind of shoot through each other, while melee units have to form lines and attack directly. And you end up with these lines fighting against each other. Well... The short-range raider units in 0k tend to work more like melee units than range units in practice, I've found. So, be because of that, Hokomoko getting about as many rogues as... And I should point out that Hokomoko has started to get warriors into their mix, which is good for them. That's exactly what they need to do. And exploit through in the towel. But as I was saying, my previous little aside, Glaives and Rockos coming out at the same rate is going to be a win for Rockos if the Glaives do not kill the Rockos quickly. Because then the Rockos are going to get critical mass, they can benefit from the square law while Rockos, sorry, while Glaives can't really. Which means that Rockos are going to end up just having a critical mass and winning. Despite the fact that Glaives are basically a type counter. The only way Glaives can win that is if they approach from all sides and kind of, and make it impossible to have that scaling work in Rockos' favor. But if the Rockos get in a good position, stagger out nicely, they can essentially get square law in any direction. And yeah, Hokomoko pointing in the chat, they think they won through macro. And you're right, you did, actually. That was... It was even for a while, but once those metal extractors got destroyed, as Exploit was getting raided, especially over the west side of the map, Hokomoko just had the economic advantage. They ended up getting more and more metal over the top. Their... What is their reclaim? Any, or not reclaim, their overdrive. Actually, not that much. 1.5 times. But overall, they just built more. They built more units. They had... They were like 40... Plus 41 to plus 17. They had twice of exploits economy for quite some time. And it paid off. Anyway, gonna move on to another game. Same players, but the map is going to, this time, be Sapphire Shores Dry, a fairly large map. It is dry, however, it's not the wet version. So hovercrafts are not likely to be are not as likely to be used, but they're still a popular choice. Yeah, Sapphire Shores Dry, fairly big map, very macro focused, 18 by 8. Very big, very wide, not very tall. Point out for reference that the last map was in f actually 8x8. Eight eight. So it's as tall as this map, but about twice as wide. So imagine this map with another this map stitched to the side, and a big dip in the middle. So we'll have that in a few minutes, stay tuned for that. And we'll be back, and I'll also turn off my browser sound, since I didn't expect that to happen at all. Okay, be back in just a couple moments, stay tuned. <laughs> 